Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Nesta McGregor. BBC Three Counties Radio. Right, so it just happens to be a crazy coincidence, but this is actually a subject that I was talking to one of my friends about earlier this week, because does the fear of racism ever put you off going to certain holiday destinations? Have you ever been, you know, put off visits in certain countries, uh, whether it be in Africa, Eastern Europe, or even Asia, for fear that the colour of your skin might affect how you're treated? Well, black travel writer Anika Raymond is encouraging people to not let a fear of racism stop them from travelling the world. Uh, Anika joins me now. Good evening. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm very good, thanks. Um, have you got your radio on at all? There's just a slight echo. You know what? I don't, but it may be the room that I am in. I don't know if that's a little bit better now. Uh, yes, that's a little bit better. I understand you're calling us from America as well. Yes, exactly. I'm in New York at the moment. Okay, awesome. So, I mean, is this part of your uh, travel diaries then? It is, absolutely. Um, I'm doing a lot of travel this summer, so... Uh, I was in Canada. I'm Canadian, so I was visiting uh, members of my family. Um, and then after New York, I'll be heading to the UK and then to Germany, Austria, and then finally back to Hong Kong, where oh. I'm currently based. I feel it sounds like a terrible, terrible job you have, Anika. I know. <laughs> Somebody has to do it, right? <laughs> Somebody has to. And I mean, I guess um, being an American, being in New York, is one of the places you can probably walk around because it's probably one of the most multicultural cities um, it, on the planet. So you, you, you don't think your fear of being treated differently should stop you seeing every corner of the world then? Exactly. I think I, I really encourage everyone to travel regardless of skin color, um, creed, uh, race, religion. Um, I think that travel is such a transformative experience. Um, and I think it is something that we should all experience if we have the opportunity to. So I wouldn't want anybody to, help, to be held back yeah. from seeing the world because of fear of persecution, because of race. Yeah, I mean, I guess there are certain places where kind of your, your safety is maybe paramount and, and your advice to go. So is there anywhere in the world you wouldn't go personally yourself? Um, I stop at war zones. Uh, I'm definitely very curious. I definitely make sure that I'm well informed before I go anywhere. Um, but if there is any threat um, at that particular moment, uh, then I, I probably won't go to that place. Mm. But for example, you know, I have been to Egypt. I went, I traveled to Egypt last year. Um, again, I made sure that um, it was safe to travel there. So I kept my eye, I guess, on, on news reports yeah. um, and, you know, reports from the media. Mm. But as well, I think it's really important to be, to cast a critical eye yeah. and to not just, um, you know, take on anything that's, sort of said to you, I think it's, it's really important to investigate and to be really well informed. Um, and to do that, you 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 basically need to um, make sure that you have a variety of sources before making a decision as to where to go and where not to go. Yeah, uh, really good point. So, you know, I mean, all these places you're talking about, going Canada, America, UK, um, the Middle East, if, have you ever experienced racism on your travels? You know, strangely enough, I've been to 68 countries. Um, and the only place that I've traveled to where I had um, an incident uh, that could be perceived as racial um, happened when I went to Dublin. I was in the UK. I was traveling. Um, I went to Dublin a few years ago, mm. and I was followed. Um, I was followed down one of the, the main streets by a group of young men, um, and they were, you know, yelling out, you know, racial, I guess, epithets, if you will. So they were remarking on. <laughs> on my body um, and they were um, they were using a voice that to me sounded as though they were trying to uh, imitate uh, Ebonics okay. um, and I found that quite offensive um, but that being said uh, I wouldn't tell anyone not to go to Ireland I think it's a beautiful place uh, I would definitely go back if I had the chance because what I saw was really impressive in terms of landscape um, and moving forward I, I have really good Irish friends now so I don't necessarily think that that one incident yeah. um, speaks for everyone reflective. in Ireland. Yeah, exactly. It's reflective, and that's kind of the point that I try to make. Yeah, I mean, so how did you block. handle that then, uh, Monika? Did you uh, stop and kind of confront them, or did you just you know just what? I ignore didn't, it? I didn't engage. I didn't engage. I thought to myself, when well, you know what, these people are obviously not too bright. Um, <laughs> they're not people that I would like to uh, engage in conversation with. Yeah, and nothing I will say 
uh, will, will stop them. Nothing I could say would, would stop them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just kept it moving. I was traveling on my own. Uh, I didn't feel it, feel it necessary to kind of harp on that. Um, so I just kept, I kept on walking. Yeah, um, um, it's really interesting because as I mentioned, uh, two different conversations I was having with uh, my friends. Um, I'll tell you about the first one. It's a guy um, who's from Wales and he's from like a little mining village where he was saying, uh, you know, growing up, he probably had maybe two black people in his school. Um, mm-hmm. There are probably people even there now that have never seen like an adult black or right. female male. Um, and I mean, it's not because it's racist, it's just because black people haven't emigrated to those parts right. of worlds. So, I mean, right. other places in the world where like, you know, you're looked at because it, it might be the first time that they've come into contact with a, a black female. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I've lived in Hong Kong for about three years total. Um, so I've had the opportunity to travel all around Asia. And I find that in many Asian countries, you know, if you go to uh, rural parts of Thailand or uh, Vietnam or China, there are many local people who have never seen black skin. Um, and they're very curious. But funnily enough, they're actually really complimentary. (laughs) So I've gotten people kind of reach out, um, you know, want to touch my skin, want to touch my hair. I have dreadlocks. Um, I just take it in stride. I mean, I think that education is really key. You know, I I work um, not only as a travel writer, but also as an educator. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that, you know, allowing people or or giving them the opportunity themselves to, to learn about others. Um, is a really good thing. Absolutely, so, um, absolutely. In those cases, you know, I definitely do engage. Um, as I said before, it all depends on the approach. Uh, sometimes um, people are, particularly children, mm. um, they can't stop themselves. You yeah, know, yeah. Like children reach out and touch me or, or Ch- point at me. Yeah. Or say out something. of curiosity, though, nothing uh, malicious. I mean, um, exactly. we, we haven't got you much for, uh, for much longer. Um, another one of my friends, um, um, who's a gay guy was saying there's certain countries that obviously because of the way uh, of the laws their governments have, have passed or the laws that exist he, he doesn't like necessarily for instance giving them his money and I know that's a separate argument um, mm-hmm. but is there anywhere where, where you feel like then, then like, like that then so you might feel you know black people might be wrongfully discriminated against or you know the un- um, unemployment rate there amongst black people might be higher than uh, it should be is there anywhere you don't go on um, sort of like beliefs. To be honest, <laughs> to be honest, if I had to look at it that way, I probably wouldn't go to most places in the world. Okay. I wouldn't be in the U.S. right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if we're gonna if we're gonna get real about it, if we're yeah. gonna talk about um, places where um, laws or, or people have been per- persecuted because they're black. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm in the U.S. Uh, stand your ground law, <laughs> ring a bell. Um, yep. You know, so uh, that being said, I choose to focus on the individual. Okay. Um, I choose to focus on the culture. Um, and while my personal safety is definitely a concern mm-hmm. and something that I think about, um, I choose not to, you know, um, let fear, I guess, keep me from seeing yeah. the world. Um, so again, you know, if there's no immediate threat. Um, I, I will go. You'll go. Yeah. I will travel. Listen, yeah. fascinating, fascinating talking to you. Okay, I'm the kind of guy then who my summer holidays, I, I don't even want to tell you as a travel writer who's <laughs> the places I've been, but it tends to be places where you kind of sit on a beach all day and then drink as much as you can at night. I'm sure you can imagine the kind of holidays, but I'm a person who w- w- would love to go and see parts of the world. So of the 68 countries you've been to, it might be difficult, but the, 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 the three that I need to visit, Anika. Wow, that is really difficult. I can tell you the ones that I was really impressed by. Okay. Um, I went to Chile. I'm really big on landscapes and culture. Okay, Chile? Um, so I went to Chile, and they have, I, I, I um, went to the desert uh, in the north, Atacama Desert. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was it had really otherworldly landscapes. Um, so that was really impressive to me. Um, one of my favorite countries, and I just wrote about this on my blog uh, last week, is France. Okay. I love France because of the food, mm. um, because of the culture, um, and because of the diversity, actually. Because yeah. I did a study abroad in France, and, you know, I learned a lot about, um, you know, the Francophone countries in Africa, for, for example, and some of the departments and territories in the Caribbean. Interesting, in yeah, yeah. Um, and third? And third country, ooh, um, China. Okay. China, because it is so different. So for someone growing up in the Western world, um, to go to China and to go to some of the rural communities, it's so, I don't want to say strange because it has a negative commutation, mm-hmm. but it's so different from anything you probably would have ever seen 
um, that I, I would definitely recommend for people to go there if, yeah. if they wanted to have that fish out of water experience. Listen, that sounds and really amazing. Epic sites. Yeah, and the food. I'm I'm always a bit wary about going to China because I've watched enough kung fu movies uh, to kind of see like they kind of just tend to chop, chop, chop and put things in a pot. Listen, it's so fascinating. <laughs> yes, it's it's so fascinating talking to you. And um, you've all. I'm going to Las Vegas in three weeks, but after that, I oh, promise lovely. I will go and see places where I can talk about the architecture rather than the sculptures. Oh, and by sculptures, I mean <laughs> the, the, the bodies over there. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, that is Anique Raymond there, who is uh, a travel writer. Fascinating. She's saying, do not. Not let uh, places where you think you might, uh, you know, be subjected to different treatment because of the colour of your skin stop you from travelling the world and broadening your horizons. So thank you very much. Nesta McGregor is my name. Only 10 minutes of the show to go.